Come here. Mother. Mother. There's a Roman soldier. Where is the house of Alpheus, the leather worker? I, I don't know. This is the village of Parish, isn't it? Yes, sir. I wouldn't too far from guessing games. But where will I find Alpheus? You passed the street, sir. It's the second one back there. Run quick by the back way and warn your father. And the third. No, the fourth house. If it isn't, I'll get back. It is, sir. I swear it. Not in there, sir. He left the village two days ago. There's no one in there, sir. It's too dangerous. We shouldn't stay here another moment. Who puts people to death? The Romans. No one there, eh? When they execute a Keep going. Fast. Yes, please, at least wait till we've had facts instead of rumors. All we've heard is mere gossip about some rabbi having been put to death in Jerusalem. A young rabbi from Galilee. How many men fit that description? More than one. Remember, my friend, Elpheus Kinsman is traveling with the Nazarene. Surely he'd let us know if any trouble... If he hasn't been executed with all the rest, you stay and greet the Roman swords, not me. But if you'll take my advice, you'll scatter before it's too late. Which of you is Alpheus? I'm not. Uh, not I. I. I was just leaving, if you'll excuse me. I am Alpheus. And these men are merely my guests for the evening. Thomas said I might find others meeting with you. Men will say anything under torture. I. We just stopped in for a moment. Our interest is in God, uh, not in any revolt against Rome. And I'm here on my own business, not Caesar's. Your cousin Thomas has been delayed in Jerusalem. When he found out I was traveling this way, he asked me to give you a message. My name is Cornelius. Oh. Welcome to my home. Rachel, water and linen for our guest, my dear. Then food and wine. Let me have your helmet. Long journey over those mountains. And a dusty one. Slip out and look around. This may be a Roman trap. <sighs> there now. I feel better. And the message from Thomas? Does it concern the Nazarene named Jesus? Was he put to death? Simply curious, that's all. My cousin, has he been arrested? And what are the Galileans are the followers? One at a time, one at a time. Your cousin is free and a good help. So are all the Galileans' close followers. All but one, Judas of Carrier, who died by his own hand. And the Galilean? He is dead. He was... Well, he was crucified. Oh, no, what reason? Wait, let me go on. Thomas said, tell all you know. Leave out nothing. Shall we make ourselves comfortable? Up to a month ago, I was stationed to the north, beyond the Sea of Tiberias, which you call Galilee. There, my hundred had the luck to capture a thieving murderer called Barabbas. Barabbas? Oh, oh, I know, I know. You've heard of him as a patriot of the people, leader of a Zarat band. But if you'd found your outpost brutally massacred, your young sentry's knife to the back, you'd... Well, <laughs> at any rate, we cornered him, crushed his rabble army, put him in chains, marched him to Jerusalem for the honor of being sentenced to death by the procurator. I gave my testimony and listened as Pilate tried to question the prisoner. But Barabbas sneered at the governor, refused to answer, and when sentence of death was passed, cursed as the soldiers led him off to prison. I was commended in order to stay in the city with my men until the end of the Passover feasts.
Centurion. Longinus. Where in the Empire did you drop from? Six months ago, Carthage, before that, Alexandria. Welcome to duty in the city. How did you know I draw on that? Who do you think suggested keeping you here to the procurator? Maneuver to share his quarters with you. This way, we'll take the shortcut through the uh -huh. temple courtyard. Uh -huh. Well, they've, they've changed things around since I was last here. Changed? Used to look like a stockyard. <laughs> Bullocks and goats, sheep and pigeons for sacrifices. Money changers tables over there. They were there until three days ago. New young teacher, a man from the north, drove them out single-handed. One man? One man. To be exact, that man. Jesus Bar Joseph from Nazareth in Galilee. I think I've heard of him. If you'd arrived here four days ago, you'd have heard of nothing else. Oh? Last Sunday morning, I had a report of trouble at the gate of the lily. So I went down to investigate. The next thing I knew, I was caught up in a crowd shouting, Hail the Messiah! Hail to Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews! They threw down their cloaks for him to ride on. He was mounted on a donkey, walking on a carpet of robes and palm branches. I was sure we had a revolution on our hands, but I was jammed so tightly in the mob I couldn't get out to alert the guard. He rode up to the temple gates, looked at them with tears in his eyes, and went away. Just like that? Just like that. And believe me, I was delighted to see him go. The next morning, he was back here in the temple courtyard, storming at the changes and cellars for turning his sacred place into a thieves' den. They scattered before him like rats. You know he's a man of courage. Well, I wouldn't call the money changes a valiant sort of enemy. Oh, I don't mean just for baiting them, but for having the nerve to come back here. He must realize that the high priest can stand no such opposition. Have you not read this scripture? The oh, very stone which gone. the builders rejected. They go to a car at its closest age. Let's stroll over and see what's happening. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. We know that you are true. Do not regard the position of men, but truly teach the words of God. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? A very choice trap. If he says pay, the entire crowd turns against him. Don't pay and I arrest him for treason. Well, come, teacher, answer. Should we pay them or should we not? Why put me to the test? Because of your great authority and wisdom. Show me a coin. Whose likeness and inscription is on it? Why, Caesar's. Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. He isn't a Roman. He's a Jew's man of his cut. You better go back to Galilee or at least get out of Jerusalem or he'll be a corpse. For twisting the beard of two courtyard lawyers? No. No, for preserving the peace that Augustus demands of this province. Oh, I know you make a point of ignoring politics. But this sovereign state of Israel is a vast steaming cauldron ready to boil over. If it does, we'll all be scalded. Wine from Hebron. Well, without trouble, there'll be no need for armies. We'd be slaving on a farm or drudging away in a mine. Personally, I prefer the Emperor's salt. It's fed me and I've bled for it. But if I have to bleed again, I prefer doing it for profit or glory, not to cover up another man's stupidity. Such as? Marrying a lady from the purple. Mm? Well, almost from the purple. <laughs> Might have bought Pontius a governor's throne, but it didn't give him a statesman's mind. He's still a soldier, always will be. What's the matter with that? You've been out in the desert sun far too long. Not me. I've said in the statesman before, I'll take a soldier commander any day. When trouble starts, a soldier crushes it fast. He doesn't dick and argue till the enemy's entrenched in the best positions. If it was years ago, we had a cohort at every 10-mile post, I'd agree. The empire's grown too large. Our troops are spread far too thin. We've 28 legions to control the world. Three in Britain, 
five on the Rhine, nine spread the length of the Danube, and eleven split from Dacia through Arabia and Egypt to Carthage and Spain. And we've won, only won, in all Judea. Well, this is it. There's your bed. I had your trunk brought over. Make yourself at home. That bed looks good. We can't rule through crushing power anymore, my friend. In these times, we need the help of such local potentates as we can bribe and use. You mean Herod, as Herod was, before his libertine living cost him the scanty respect and obedience he had. Now we appoint the high priest, manipulate through the temple. Unfortunately, this present one, Caiaphas, is more greedy and grasping than his father in law Annas was. So I've heard. But there must be a limit to even an Israelite's patience. Show them a leader that'll stand up to this Caiaphas, and the cauldron will really boil. Don't think Caiaphas doesn't know it. Perhaps it might be better if the Nazarene did leave the city. If he doesn't, Caiaphas may feel forced to silence him. Maybe the Nazarene's followers will rise up to protest. Oh, but enough of this gloomy croaking. It's time to die. And I know an inn not far away. The lamb is cooked with wine. Uh, uh. My men were given the honor of guarding the palace where the procurator was staying during his visit to Jerusalem. Although I was kept busy with routine matters, I was unable to put Longinus predictions from my mind. I kept thinking of the Nazareth. I guess that's why, one off-duty moment, I acted on impulse. Wait. You. Aren't you the man I saw in the temple court, standing by the side of the Nazarene? Yes. Come here. You're one of his followers. What's your name? Thomas. Thomas, huh? Tell him for his own good to leave Jerusalem at once. Understand? I understand. But I doubt if he'll do it. Then I'll order him to go. Where's he staying? In Bethany. Way up there? When's he coming down the hill? At sundown. We're meeting for the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. <sighs> I'll be on duty then. Give him the message as I told you. Tell him it's a centurion's command. I'll tell him. Thomas. Yes? Let me know what he does. That is how I came to know your cousin. Now I learned later of the things which transpired that night. Their meeting place was in an upper room. And even then, the Nazarene must have known what still lay in the future. I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall never eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Blessed art thou, Lord God, King of the world, who hath brought forth bread from the earth. Take, eat, 
This is my body, given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of the world, who hath created the fruit of the vine. Drink ye all of this, for it is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. I tell you, I shall not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is on the table. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined. But woe to the man by whom he is betrayed. Master, who do you mean? But none of us would betray you. Master, how can you doubt our loyalty? I'd never do such a thing. Even as they were affirming their loyalty, there was one who slipped out to betray him. Why didn't the others stop him? Because I didn't suspect him. But the Nazarene had just said he would be betrayed. I know, I know. But as Thomas explained it to me, each man loved Jesus so dearly, the very thought of betrayal seemed impossible. Besides, the one who went out was so well trusted, he had been chosen as the keeper of their purse. And they may have assumed that he was going to pay for the food they had eaten, or to give alms to the poor. Thomas said they were all eager to assure Jesus of their loyalty. He even argued as to which of them would be foremost as his follower. But the Nazarene was displeased by their rivalry. Who has followed him longest? Answer me that. Who forsook the most? I could have been a wealthy man. Did you leave a home and servants as I did? No. My children. My children. The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those in authority are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the leader as one who serves. For which is the greater, one who sits at table or one who serves? Is it not the one who sits at table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have continued with me in my trials. As my father appointed a kingdom for me, so do I appoint one for you. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your strength may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brethren. Turned again? I have not turned away. Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow until you three times deny that you know. 
No, Master, no. Not I. Never would I deny you. When the supper was ended, Thomas said, he led them out to a nearby garden called Gethsemane. Wait here and pray that you may not enter into temptation. not watch with me one hour. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Master, I... The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Behold, the hour is at hand. Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Master. Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? That's the man. Please. I had no knowledge of these happenings until later. But I wasn't the only one kept unaware of Caiaphas' moves that night. While the city lay sleeping, he had Jesus brought to Anna's home, where a carefully chosen section of the Sanhedrin questioned him till daybreak. In Anna's home? Yes. You're sure of that? Peter followed, mingled with the soldiers in the courtyard. Well, they have no right to do that. Our laws provide for trial before the whole Sanhedrin, openly in the temple. That's true. It's trial in the dead of night? It's not justice, it's mockery. Be that as it may, Caiaphas did it. And no wonder all the decent people of Israel have turned against him. It is a bitter thing being conquered, but being betrayed by one of your own. My first knowledge of what had occurred came just as the day broke. When having agreed on his guilt, they brought him to the palace where Pilate was staying. They wouldn't enter the judgment hall themselves. Some religious business about not defiling themselves by entering a Gentile's house during the Passover. So I had the task of waking the procurator and telling him what they sought. Needless to say, he wasn't in the best humor when he came out. Your Excellency. 
If a man are working of such urgency. Hi. We regret urgently having interfered. But it will only take a moment of This man you've brought to me, of what is he accused? He incited the people to riot in the very courtyard of the temple. Why, he even claims to be the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God. He encourages his followers to hail him as the king of all the Jews. He suppose it's yours, not Rome's. Take him. Judge him according to your laws. We have, Excellency, and found him deserving of death. All we ask is your endorsement of our findings. If he were not guilty, we wouldn't have brought him here. Waiter. I have heard many men examined, questioned more than a few myself. But if a Nazarene had guilt or evil in his nature, I couldn't detect it, nor could Pilate. Are you a king, then? You say I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness for the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Truth? What is truth? I find no fault in the man. But he has stirred up the people. Yes, he's spoken against the Caesar. king himself. All over Judea, from here to Galilee. From Galilee? Is he a Galilean? Yes, he comes from Nazareth. Then he comes under Herod's jurisdiction, not mine. Centurion. Yes, Your Excellency. Have the prisoner taken to the Tetrarch. But Excellency, we found him. Wait, 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 asked him a hundred questions, but the Nazarene gave him no answer. He demanded that Jesus perform a miracle for his amusement. Jesus held his son. And finally mocking him, Herod had him robed in purple to befit your kingship, he said, and ordered me to take him back to the governor. Little as I knew the man, and hardened as a soldier of Rome must be, my heart went out to him. I reported all that had happened to the governor, and again, went to the Nazarene's accusers. You brought the man to me as one who incites the people. I questioned him. I found no fault in him. No guilt in the things of which he was accused. No, nor did Herod. The prisoner's done nothing to merit death. I will have him chastised and then released. No! No! He found no wrong in the man, no guilt. And yet he ordered him to be flogged. Perhaps it was to save the Nazarene's life. But Pilate thought a flogging would appease them. Pilate is the governor. He speaks for the emperor. Since when has Roman justice been betrayed to appease the men of a conquered land? Perhaps I do our governor an injustice. Yet I feel that he was more eager to humble Caiaphas than to help an innocent man. Be that as it may, he made another attempt. You're all familiar with the custom of releasing a prisoner to the people at the time of the feast. Of course, yes, we know. Well, after Jesus had been flogged, they brought him before the governor once more. The soldiers had made him a crown. A crown of thorns. You have heard how many things they have witnessed against you. They say you call yourself the son of God. Who are you? From where do you come? Why don't you answer? Don't you realize I have the power to release you or crucify you? You've 
would have no power at all against me, except it were given you from above. Therefore, he that delivered me to you has the greater sin. If you release that man, you are no friend of Caesar's. so you may know I find no fault in him. Behold! The man. By custom, as at each Passover, I will free a prisoner to you. Will you have me release for you the king of the Jews? What shall I do with Jesus called Christ? man's blood. See to it yourselves. Release Barabbas. And so Pilate backed down once more. But he had one final taunt for Caiaphas and his cohorts. He ordered a sign for the Nazarene's cross, saying... This is the king of the Jews. While he hung on the cross, those who had persecuted him came to mock him. They know not what they do. If you are the Christ, save yourself and save us. Do you not fear God? You who are condemned, you and I are condemned justly. We have received the due reward for our deeds. But this man, He's done nothing wrong. Jesus. Lord. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Verily I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. When my hours of duty ended, I could not keep away. I made my way to the hilltop and found my friend Longinus in charge. He still lives. As we stood watching, the Nazarene's mother came up the hill, accompanied by her sister and two of her son's followers. Behold, 
thy son. Behold thy mother. A man, Joseph of Arimathea, came to the procurator, asking permission to place the Nazarene's body in his own new tomb. Pilate granted the request. No sooner had the man left, however, than Caiaphas' messengers came shouting protests. It seemed the Nazarene had made predictions of rising from the grave, and they who feared him in life were now suspicious that his followers would steal his body and claim his forecast fulfilled. So, to humor them, Pilate gave orders for a guard to be placed at the tomb. It was very kind of you to, to take the time to tell us. I wish we could have seen more of the Nazarene while he lived even though he was not the redeemer of the scriptures. Still, he was a wise and gentle man, a great teacher. His death is a real loss. He is not dead. But you said he was crucified, that he died on the cross. I did. But then how can you say that, that he's not? Listen, my friend Longinus drew the duty of guarding the sepulcher. On the last night of the week, I went with him. We made inspection. Go no farther. You you mean you stay here with your men? Orders, I thought you knew. No. 
Caiaphas idea. He assumes all soldiers can be bribed. Well, I've done harder jobs for the Empire. Me too. More than I foresaw when I received my first pile of gladius. That's a long time back for both of us. Long time. A lot of marches, good many scars. <laughs> you know something? Mm. Life on a farm of one's own might not be so unbearable in Tuscany or Umbria. But the valley is a Po. I remember the grapes. <laughs> Man, pull yourself together. You tremble, that was all. No. No, the figure. What figure? Uh, I, I don't know. One with shining robes so bright, I I was dazzled then. I... Why would you never believe this? You'll have to. When all your men tell the same story, get them ready. I'll go with you. Perhaps I should leave one or more of my men here. To guard what? An empty tomb? As I learned later from Thomas, the woman of Magdala, adding oils and spices to anoint the body, came to the tomb while the dawn mists were still on the ground. Finding the stone rolled aside and the sepulchre empty, she believed the Nazarene's body had been stolen by his enemies. She ran back to the city and told Peter of her discovery. Together with John, they hurried back to the tomb. John ran ahead, but on reaching the door and seeing the empty tomb, he dropped to his knees, overwhelmed by grief. Stop them. How could they have permitted them to? I wonder. Where did they remove the grave cloth? How could we understand the thinking of men who would, who would do a thing like that? Go tell the others. You go, Peter. You and John. I want to stay here a while. touch me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. The resurrection rumor spread, and so one afternoon, whatever you may say, is for my curiosity, not Pilate's. Sit down. <laughs> You're not under arrest. I've, I've heard wild tales about the Nazarene. Well, having been seen alive. 
Is there any truth to it? There are those who say he has risen from the grave. Do you know any who claim to have actually seen him? Yes. Who? A woman, Mary of Magdala, a man named Cleophas and his friend, who walked with him on the road to Emmaus. And ten of those who with me have traveled constantly with him these past three years. They've actually seen him? Talked to him? So they say. And you? Do you believe them? I... I don't know. I was away when he appeared to them. I, I didn't see him myself. Are they honest men? Oh, yes. I'm sure they believe they saw him, but... All my life I've been called doubter, skeptic. Until I see him with my own eyes, see the nail holes in his hands, the, the wound in his side... I, I'd like to question the others. Can you arrange it? I think so. We stay in the upper room of the house where we observe the Passover feast. If you will come there tonight. I'll... A Roman centurion. He asked to come for his own interest, not as a soldier. Well, otherwise, you shouldn't have told him where to find us. It would have been safer if we could have met him somewhere. Matthew, put the bar on the door while we discuss this. Man may have spoken with sincerity, but if he hasn't, I think we should leave here quickly. We can go to Lazarus' home, at least for the night. Well, that's the first place they'd look for us. Why well, wasn't he satisfied with what you told him? Surely that should be enough. Because I could only say they say they have seen, but I have not. But if you'd assured him that you believe the master had risen, I, I could not say that. Unless I see in his hands the prints of the nails and place my fingers in the mark and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Peace be with you. Master. Thomas. Come to me. Put your finger here and see my hand. Put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. My Lord and my God. Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Didn't you see him? You must have passed him on the stairs. On the stairs? His robe. Your master's robe. Brushed my arm. My friends, you can cease discussing the teachings of a wandering rabbi and start worshiping the risen Son of God. It was no mortal man that Thomas and the others followed, no leader of a small group or of one land. He was a leader of all men, of victor, not over mere human enemies, but over death itself. With all that is left to me of life, I shall tell his story. Jesus lives. He is the hope, the only hope of all mankind. I know, for I beheld his glory. <laughs> <laughs> 
Christ crowned with love.